Now the next video with the A3 transformation, we're going to go from A2 to A35. This is where you have to mix two different shades. We're going to add A3 60% by volume, and then we're going to add some D into the A3 40% and mix that. When you get into A3 5, it has more red in it. It's a little lower value with more red, and then we'll use that technique. And you'll be surprised, it's really pretty easy to nail. But most of this is just developing that technique on how to float the colors across without getting blotchy. And then also using the dab technique to feather and mix in the incisal edge where we're gonna mix the gray and the color of the denton. How are you folks doing? James Klum here. This video is gonna be a lot of fun. It's about understanding Vita shades. Particularly if you have a restoration that you need to add more chroma or bring the value down. You can also take the value up, but that's for another video. Here we're going to work in the A zone. Now what's interesting is we have an A color for the cervical area for Denton. That's what I'm going to work with when I'm working in the A zone. However, if I need to take an A1 to an A2, I'm going to take that A color out, the meal color out, and we're going to apply it to the cervical area and this is a technique on how to apply more saturation or lower the value and not get blotching. Now, Meal works really well for this technique, both Meal 850 and Meal Aesthetic. This technique also works really well when I'm using Avicolor by Aviclair. That's a product that I use on Impress and also the Vita products. So this is a really good technique to learn and we're gonna learn it here on our shade tabs. In fact, I teach this way uh, where we take a shade tab and we're gonna make a shade tab A1 into an A35. And what's the technique for that? It's different than if we were gonna go from A1 to A3. There's different colors. Now, what you'll see in the A zone, that A1, 2, and 3, we use the A color of the Mio kit, right? Whether it be the 850 or the aesthetic. When we go into the A3 or A4, we have to use a different combination. It's not linear. In other words, we just don't add more saturation to get into the A3, 5, or 4. We do from A1 to A3, but if we go A3, 5, A4, that has more red in it. So we're going to mix in some D. So if we're going to A3, 5, we're going to use a combination, as you see on the chart here, of where we're going to have A, 60%, and 40% D. Now, if we're going into A4, it's going to have more red, so we're going to change that combination around where we go 40% A and 60% D, and that works really well. So in this video, we're going to show the technique we used. It's going to be floating. I used two different strokes for floating on the color. We want to have a glaze on the surface of the ceramic first. That's going to be the foundation, and then we float the colors over the glaze, which allows it to dissipate in a very even format so you're not going to get blotchy. And there's certain techniques we're going to use. So to add a color, we're going to float it horizontally on the glaze first. And then we'll use a floating blotching technique just to blend it to make sure we have a graduation of color where the cervical side's more chroma as it graduates into the mid body. And then for the incisal edge, we're gonna bring the value down, like from A1 to A3, that value is lower in the incisal edge, and we're gonna use smoke for that. So a few things we wanna think about on our shade tab here is if you're looking at A, it's a combination of brown and red. So it's a brown reddish color. That's why we add the D to it, because the D has more red in it. For the B shades, it's linear. In other words, you can go from a light B to a very dark B just using the B shade. You don't have to mix anything in with it. And that's also C, which is gray. So the B is yellow reddish. And then you have your gray, which is C. And then you have your reddish gray for your D shades, which you use a combination of different colors, which will be in another video. So the technique we're gonna use here is what I use in my class. We're gonna take an A1 and make it into an A2 but it's the technique that you use so you don't see blotching. And you can get this with one firing in most cases. So what we're gonna do is add the glaze first. That's really important. And then we're gonna float in on top of that glaze. Laterally is a lateral float and also a dabbing float. So without further ado, let's get into the video of taking A1 to A2. And then we're gonna take that A2 up to A3.
The foundational layer that we're gonna build our colors on is the Mio Glaze, whether it be the Mio Aesthetic or the Mio 850, the technique is the same. You want a nice even layer, make sure there's no brush strokes. We're adding a dental shade to the surfacal area. Now let's just take a look to the shade tab. You can see that we got that up to probably about an A3. Well, that's easy to correct. What we're gonna do is take that brush floating and dispensing those colors to slightly thin them. Notice that we use a sweeping floating technique to add color. One thing nice about Mio is that when you add the color, it just doesn't blotch. Well, you can blotch it, but by using that floating technique, whether it be a dab or a sweep, we can add the effect of color and then feather that color where it becomes less saturated toward the incisal edge. Tone down the incisal edge with smoke, lower value, and that's what we see on the shade tab here as we're going from A1 to A2. We'll also mix that in with the incisal component of the dentinal shade. We want to neutralize some of the saturation a little bit more by floating, evenly dispensing that color so it's less saturated. And that's done with a floating technique of the color on top of the glaze. That's much better. So now we have an A2. Now let's go ahead and take this up to an A3 by adding more A liquid ceramic, make it more saturated. And from A1 to A3, it's a linear addition, meaning that we just add more color when we get into the A3.5 and A4 zone, we need to start mixing in some D shades with the A because those deeper shades are a little more red and we'll touch that a little later on. So here what we're doing is adding more saturation of color, sweeping that across the tooth, bringing in the saturation down a bit. And there's our A3 tab. We're just a little too saturated, which is okay. It's easy to change. Our color uniformity is becoming better now. It's still a little saturated, but we'll come back and neutralize that. By adding smoke again, we're bringing the value down on the incisal edge. And once added, then we'll feather that into the incisal dentinal shade to blend, and bring the value down. Now we have an A3. So we took an A1 tab up to an A3. This is a lot of fun and it's easy to do. Now that was a lot of fun. This is something that you can do at your practice with your team, take out a shade tab and practice. Just practice adding glaze on it and then adding the colors that you would see here in the chart for the A. It's really easy to do and practice makes perfect. And uh, that's something that can be very effective for training and give you a lot of confidence. In fact, when I'm working on zirconia, usually that's the thing we have to do is add more cervical saturation and bring down the value. So this technique works really well on zirconia and also for those ceramics that we're customizing chair side. This technique is so important for that. It's the foundation of color, saturation, chroma, gradation, and value. And then if you need to add characteristics, you add it on top of that. And that's what you can do with Mio. You can build it in different layers, almost like you're stacking a ceramic, but here you're putting in different layers and it works so very well. Now the next video with the A3 transformation, we're gonna go from A2 to A3.5. This is where you have to mix two different shades. We're gonna add A360% by volume, and then we're gonna add some D into the A340% and mix that. When you get into A3.5, it has more red in it. 
it's a little lower value with more red and then we'll use that technique and you'll be surprised it's really pretty easy to nail but most of this is just developing that technique on how to float the colors across without getting blotchy and then also using the dab technique to feather and mix in the incisal edge where we're going to mix the gray and the color of the dentin so it looks really smooth and harmonious so let's go ahead and do the next section of a2 to a35 Taking the A35 tab, you can see that's our target. That's what we want to accomplish. We first start by adding the glaze. This is the same technique, whether you're using meal 850 or meal aesthetic. You want to place the glaze so you don't see the brush strokes. It needs to float on top of that surface. Now for our color transition here, we're using a combination of meal A60% and then mixing in the D40% and that's our target color for A35. Notice as we add that color, we're floating it across by sweeping it across the tooth. You'll see it start to dispense. Just do a color check. Cervically is where you have more intensity of color. And then we're going to float using the float dab technique, which will neutralize the color. We want to feather that color. By adding smoke on the incisal edge, we're bringing the value down. And this is where we're going to float and start mixing that into that incisal section of our dentinal shade. You can see that's how fast it is. One thing I love about Mio is how the colors just start to dispense and disperse. And by using that dab floating technique, we can make it look really nice in the feathering effect. And that's what we did to get a two to a 3.5 is a nice exercise to practice with. Now, wasn't that fun? That's a really good exercise that you can use with your team. This is what I use in some of my training classes to warm people up before they start adding meal to a ceramic or a zirconia. But the technique is so profound. It really is a good tool to have chair side. And I think it's the technique of floating color so you don't get blotching. And it's a really smooth transition. And most of the time we can get this with one firing, which is really important to us. The CS6 is the furnace that I prefer when I'm using meal aesthetic. There's a fast technique where it's down to just a little over 10 minutes. And as the tray on the chamber descends, it allows you to do a faster firing and hence it's a faster cycle altogether. So, so that's a really benefit to me when I'm adding colors chair side to have a quick turnaround. It also works really well for Ivacolor and also the meal 850. There is a shorter firing option because of the way the CS6 does drive, but you definitely wanna have a CS or a CS2 or CS6. You will find that for Mio and Ivacolor, the speed fire, if that's the only furnace you have, it's really a zirconia furnace. It's not the best furnace for ceramics. In fact, it's not really good at all. So you do need to add another ceramic furnace to your portfolio to really make this work well but if you have any comments or questions make sure you post them below i want to hear what you have to say in the meantime i'll see you folks in the next video bye now